Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Jake and you're watching Meat Sauce. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the Mavic Mini. Now, before I get into this review, I just wanna thank the guys over at glassbattery.com.au for lending me this drone for this review. If you live in the Pilbara or anywhere else, but particularly in the Pilbara, go check out their website, glassbattery.com.au. Why pay more for batteries in the Pilbara when you can get AGH batteries delivered straight to you at ultra low prices with free shipping. Why? Anyway guys, thank you very much. Onto the review. The Mavic Mini is a brand new drone released by the world's most popular drone manufacturer, DJI. It was released just this year. Now the Mini, as many of you may or may not know, is a direct descendant of the Mavic Pro, which was released in 2016. And I have another review for that drone alone linked in the description below. But today I'm gonna to be comparing these two. Now, while these drones are much the same, they are very much different at the same time. They both feel different when you're setting them up and while you're flying them. So what does three years of drone innovation get you? Let's find out. The biggest thing that separates this drone here from this one here is obviously the size and therefore the weight. This thing here is only 249 grams and I gotta say it is crazy how light this thing is. It's almost too light without all the missing heft that this bad boy has. It ends up feeling cheap and plastic, which this drone is plastic too, don't get me wrong, but there's something about weight that adds the feeling of value to something. It's much like a watch. Have you ever put on a cheap watch that you might've got from Kmart and thought, this feels cheap, and then put on an expensive watch from, I don't know, some jewelry store, whatever brand, and you think, ah, this thing actually feels pretty expensive. Weight has a big thing to do with how something feels in terms of value. But all that means nothing. Once you've got these things up in the sky, up in the f***ing air, things start to feel a little bit different and all your concerns fly away. As a little bit of quick side note, I'm not gonna get into crazy amounts of detail in terms of sensor sizes and all this and that. At the end of the day, if you're buying this drone, you're not really going to be buying this as a professional. You might, but I, I doubt it for some reason. This drone is aimed more at a consumer hobbyist level or like an entry level drone. You can actually achieve professional looking shots with this. I'm not saying that you can't do that, but that's why I'm not really gonna go crazy into detail with this because if you're a professional and you're wanting all those high spec details, you probably wouldn't be looking at one of these anyway. You'd be looking at something like this or probably even bigger. I flew this thing on a small hill just outside my hometown. This was just yesterday and we were getting winds of up to 34 kilometers in an hour. It was windy as f but we flew nonetheless. And let's be real, this is something eventually that you're going to have to deal with. You're not always gonna know the conditions. You're not always gonna check the conditions. You're just gonna get somewhere, think, oh, shit, it's a bit windy. And you're gonna be concerned whether or not something like this can handle it. So we set the drone up, we took off and it was fine. It was really fighting to stay completely stable. But I'm really glad that the winds were like this because this is a really good test to see how well these things can ha um, hold themselves up. And compared to the much larger Mavic Pro, it handled it very, very well. I would not have any complaints in this department at all. Considering its size, it done this well. During flight is where this gets really quite interesting. Both of these drones fly in the exact same way as one another as in terms of uh, stick layout and everything like that. They both turn, ascend and descend and everything exactly the same way. Actually flying from point A to point B against the wind, this drone, the Mavic Mini, actually outrun the Mavic Pro, which shocked me a little bit at the start, but when I kind of think about it, I'd say it's probably a lot to do with just, I mean, I'm not an engineer, but the aerodynamics of the whole thing, this thing is smaller, therefore has less surface area, therefore has less wind resistance, maybe? <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing that's probably the case. However, when it comes to flying with the wind or even like alongside the wind, so maybe like coming in this way or whatever, the old Mavic Pro was easily, easily able to outrun the Mavic Mini. And that has a lot to do with just its greater size, propeller size and everything like that. Just didn't have the wind fighting up back against it and it was easily able to outrun this little guy. Not by like a crazy amount, but still it, it, it will win. In standard mode, it's gonna 
So overall, flying this little guy, it's pretty great. So let's get into the camera. The quality overall that this thing produces is great. It's outstanding. It shoots up to 2.7K in 30 frames per second or 1080p 30 or 1080p 60. There is no option for 4K, which is a bit of a shame, but it doesn't really surprise me. 2.7K should be enough during an edit, but depending on your style, I honestly believe 1080p 60 is probably your best option. Uh, in my opinion, everyone's different, but frame count is more important than frame size when it comes to drone footage or any action type footage frames more than size. And that's especially true when you're using a gimbal. This drone uses a three axis gimbal, which is exactly the same as the Pro, and that enables really sputtery smooth footage. Now, frame size is important uh, when you're using like a handheld camera, especially when you're gonna do a digital stabilization, but these are already stable as, so it's more frame count that comes important, especially if you wanna start doing slow motion shots and everything like that, you definitely want the frame count, not the frame size. And these gimbals, it is incredible how small they can make these gimbals now, DJI, I mean. Moving towards connectivity with the controller and the drone. In my experience, both of these drones fly exceptionally well with zero dropouts. I haven't experienced one yet. The DJI Mavic Pro has an advertised maximum distance of seven kilometers unobstructed, which overall is pretty true. I've never gone seven kilometers, but I honestly don't think it's gonna have trouble with that at all. As long as you've got clear sight, like line of sight, it'll work fine. The Mavic Mini, however, only has a max distance of four kilometers. In my opinion, four kilometers is more than enough. You really shouldn't fly these too far away from where you can't see them anyway. You're gonna need line of sight for that four kilometers distance. It's more than enough. So don't look at that as a downfall. Moving on to batteries, battery life. My God, impressive. Charging these batteries is easier than ever compared to the Mavic Pro. These batteries can be charged directly via the drone while the battery's plugged in uh, via micro USB. Or if you have the charging hub, you can charge up to three of these with one 18 watt micro USB charger. Now this will only charge one battery at a time in a sequence from like start, one will start, then that will finish, the next will start, then that will finish, then the next one, blah, blah, blah. But it'll do it in around about 90 minutes per battery. It would have been really nice to see USB-C with this drone. It is nearly 2020 and we're still running on micro USB. I feel like with USB-C, just the convenience and possibly some faster charging time would have been nice but we can get over it, it's fine. Regardless of its USB type, it is incredibly handy being able to USB charge these, especially when you're on the go. This means you, this means you don't need any extra accessories to charge these when you're in your car, for example. Just plug them into the USB port of your car. If you've got a 12 volt with a USB charger for your phone, plug it in there, that's it, that's all you need. But while we're speaking of ports, it brings up another issue of mine. I don't really like how the USB port and the micro SD port are exposed on the back of the Mini. While the Mavic Pro has flaps for each of its ports, there's a micro USB there, and it has a Wi-Fi RC switch as well as its micro SD card slot there. These flaps don't offer any kind of IP rating or anything like that, but they do offer a peace of mind, especially when it comes to dust. Any drone's gonna kick up dust when you're taking or landing off, especially like, um, unless you're on like a grassy field, you're always gonna get dust. And these open ports on the Mavic Mini kind of bring up concerns for me in terms of the longevity of those ports. If you have access to a mat or a towel or something like that, maybe just put that down. I don't know how well they're gonna hold up over time with dust. Moving on, the app used to control the Mavic Mini is different from what it is to control the Pro and many other DJI drones. Instead of using DJI Go, we've moved on to DJI Fly. The app is far less capable compared to DJI Go. It's missing many smart features like follow me, and active tracking. And it's a little bit disappointing. I feel like they probably could have had these features. They do offer some modes called quick shots that offer like easy uh, automated maneuvers. And they do include some form of basic tracking as well. 
So there's the move that's called like the droney, which basically the drone will sit in front of you. You choose your target that you're locking onto and then you click go and then it will like fly off backwards on an angle up into the distance and it will track you and then it will come and do the same thing but in reverse. It offers a mode called rocket, which is much the same except it just goes directly up. It offers circle, which is just like a 360 view. So if you wanna get a view of your boat, you just choose your boat and it will do a 360 around your boat. And helix, which is basically the same, but it will go out in a spiral and eventually go out further and further. Like I said, these modes do include a form of tracking, but in my experience, it wasn't quite as accurate or reliable as the tracking available on the DJI uh, Pro, which is three years older, so I don't know. It works, but nowhere near as well. Like I said, a majority of these modes are fine, but I honestly believe that you will find more satisfaction in just trying to achieve these shots manually, and they're probably gonna look more visually pleasing. It takes a bit of practice, but you can get there. And safety. Safety is key when it comes to protecting you, your loved ones, and your really expensive drone. So this one might mean more to some than others. The Mini has no anti-collision detection, unlike the Mavic Pro. Try to fly the Mavic Pro into a wall. If you've got anti-collision detection on, it won't let you. It just won't. Well lit conditions, or mostly well lit conditions, it just won't let you. Try do that with the Mavic Mini and you're gonna have a bad time. Seriously, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna fuck your drone up, more than likely. That's due to the missing cameras on the front of the drone. If you look at the Mavic Pro, there's two cameras which offer stereoscopic, uh, which is basically like a 3D view of the world. The drone has depth sensing. It knows how far away something is from it. The Mini has little, little sections there, but they don't actually have anything in there. They're just the show. That's what separates these two drones, in my opinion. Like, uh, well, I mean, in everyone's opinion, but it's a big, big difference. Now you can purchase a 360 degree prop guard for this drone to fly it around and have that little bit of extra peace of mind. But these aren't always foolproof, especially when you're flying at high speeds and it's better to prevent a crash than just to protect one from it in the first place. Hierarchy of control, motherfucker. Eliminate, don't discriminate. <laughs> you know what I mean though, seriously. I think an another notable missing feature from here is also the downward sensors. The Mavic Pro has uh, like a sonar sensors to detect how far away it is from the ground, whereas the Mavic Mini does not. It has two cameras, the Mavic Pro has one camera. So this still like, it, it, it works perfectly fine, especially for like, when it's like hovering and keeping itself still or uh, knowing its distance from the ground. I just think sonar is probably a more reliable system. It's real data based off of sonar sensors. I, I don't, it's better, all right? It's just better. Okay, all right, all right then, let's, let's move on. Let's talk about money, the price. The price of this drone is incredibly attractive. It starts at $599 Australian dollars for just the drone and controller with one battery alone, which is a good price. And you can push that up to $799 if you want to include the Fly More Combo Pack, which contains plenty of goodies, including, but not limited to, two extra batteries, so three total, an 18 watt fast charger with a charging dock, three spare pairs of propellers, a super handy and cool carrying bag, and the 360 degree prop guard. Compare that with the Mavic Pro, which is really hard to find. You can't buy that off DJI.com anymore. You have to find like some external seller. You can still find it, but it's a little bit more difficult. You have to buy, buy the Platinum model now, which is still the exact same drone, just slightly better. So that's all good. You can pick that up for $15.99 for the, with the Fly More combo. So a fair big price difference. I'm not even gonna talk about the Mavic Pro 2, a Mavic 2 Pro, I can't remember, but I'm not even gonna talk about that thing. I haven't even had a chance to fly that thing before. Looks like a great bloody drone, but that that sucker comes in at uh, 2,499 Australian dollars, which holy shit, that's an expensive drone. And that doesn't even include any extra goodies. That's literally just the drone controller and one battery. But we'll ignore that for now. Summary! Summarize! It's time to finish this video off, guys. It's been good. It's been fun. We've had a ball. We've had a blast. It's time to end this. Should you buy the Mavic Mini? You, I'm talking to you. Should you? Should ya? Or should you buy the larger Mavic Pro? If you're just a casual or a hobbyist and you're just after some nice cinematic shops, uh, shots while you're camping or snowboarding or skateboarding or whatever the 
you do. This drone is honestly perfect. It's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg and maybe even a kidney. It's gonna do everything you need it to do. But seriously, spend that bit of extra money if you can and get the fly more combo. You're not gonna regret it and you're gonna have a much more reliable time. I honestly think if you just get the base pack, you're gonna end up feeling disappointed just flying it once, landing it, flying it once, landing it. 30 minutes ain't enough. Or even just buy one spare battery if that's tickles your fancy but honestly i'll just if you got the money or if you want to save that little bit longer just get the fly more combo if you want to have a more serious experience with more of a professional vibe with 4k video and all that plus some extra intelligent modes and those safety features i was mentioning before spend extra and get the mavic pro first gen or the mavic pro platinum is what you'll probably be able to find these days the drone is extremely capable it is very smart and it provides some beautiful imagery it has almost the same features as the pro 2 and at a fraction of the cost especially because you get that combo pack for like way less than you do just the drone of the number two, of the of the second generation. What you do lose out on is a few extra conveniences like the USB charging you're speaking about, but you can just overcome that with a 12 volt uh, car charger for your Mavic Pro drone. Not as convenient, but you can still do it. It's not that big of a deal. So overall, it's a pretty compelling drone, that old mini. It's price point can't really be matched. I wouldn't consider, if, if that's the price point you're going for in a beginner drone, I wouldn't go for anything else other than DJI, honestly. I'm not I'm not a DJI fanboy in any means. Don't get me wrong, I love this shit. But if something else better comes out at the same price point, I would recommend that any day. I really don't care. At the end of the day, I want to use the best stuff available for my money and I want to recommend the best stuff available for your money. You, Sam, Greg, you, Keith. Yeah, you hear me. Yeah. I think that's about it guys. If I've missed anything, feel free to ask me the questions in the comment section below. Please hit the subscribe button. Every time you click that subscribe button, Jesus Christ, happy tears. <laughs> I cannot confirm nor deny that. But yeah, it's it, it really makes my day when you hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell if you're really, really keen. I'm gonna try and do more videos more often. I've just been a busy mother f lately. Um, you know, that's life for you. It's all good. I'll, I'll still keep making them. Just hang around. Don't, don't lose confidence in me. Um, um, and again, thank you very much to the guys at glassbattery.com.au. Please check them out. Have a look at their website. It's linked in the description below. Uh